Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on cervical incompetence. It is a condition in pregnancy where the cervix begins to dilate, not by the initiation of uterine contractions, but instead due to the structural weakness in cervix itself, resulting in an inability to hold the weight of the pregnancy, and also causing bulging of the amniotic membranes into vaginal canal, later on ca causing rupture of membrane, and then causing preterm labor or might even cause fetal loss. It usually occurs in the second trimester, and sometimes it might cause second trimester miscarriage. The risk factors of cervical incompetence include having a history of incompetent cervix in previous pregnancy, or cervical injury due to multiple dilatation and keratage, or due to repeated surgical trauma, for example termination of pregnancy, corn biopsy, or cervical cautery. Can also be due to anatomical abnormalities of the cervix like congenital cervical hypoplasia or aplasia, exposure to diethyl steel bestrol, and also connective disorder, connective tissue disorder like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome can cause cervical incompetence as well. For investigation, a transvaginal ultrasound is clinically useful to identify the signs of effacement, also known as funneling, and also to assess the cervical length. So funneling specifically refers to the separation of the internal os from the two side walls of the upper end of the cervical canal. And the ultrasound finding for funneling will include cervical length, which is shortened, less than 25 mm, protrusion of membranes, and also presence of fetal parts in the cervix or vagina. So for management, serial ultrasound is done every two weeks should be considered in a patient with historical risk factors and the ultrasound should be initiated between 16 and 20 weeks of gestation or later. If initiated earlier and the patient appears to have a short cervix, repeat the examination because the upper portion of the cervix is not easily distinguished from the lower uterine segment. And the evaluation of a patient with cervical shortening or funneling should include a comprehensive ultrasonographic assessment of the fetus to rule out any anomalies and also include tocometry and also lab assessment to rule out whether it is labor or to rule out infection like chorio amnionitis as well. So if the mother is in labor, tocolytics and steroid can be given to improve the fetal lung maturity. If there is infection like chorio amnionitis present, Proceed with delivery with antibiotics cover. Other treatment include bed rest and reduced physical activity, which is a common practice but not medically proven to be effective. Pelvic rest by limiting sexual intercourse, and also cervical circlage, where the doctor uses a surgical pulse string type suture to reinforce the cervix to treat this cervical incompetency. So cervical cerclage, the indications for elective cerclage include congenital or acquired visible defects in the ectal cervix, classic features of cervical incompetence, history of losing pregnancy at an earlier gestational age, history of painless cervical dilatation up to 4 to 6 cm, history of cervical trauma or excessive cervical dilatation during previous termination of pregnancy. Whereas the indication for urgent cerclage will include those patients that have ultrasound changes, which are consistent with short cervix. These are the types of cerclage that can be done, which include McDonald's suture, where the running suture is placed in the body of the cervix near the internal os to encircle the cervix. Then it is tightened to reduce the cervical canal to 5 to 10 mm. Whereas another type of cerclage is the modified Shirodka procedure. It is more complicated and it involves an anterior incision, placement and also tying of a special muslin tape with suturing of the cervical mucosa back in place. This is reserved for patients that have failed with the McDonald suture. The contraindications of cervical cerclage include 
bleeding in pregnancy, ruptured membranes, and also uterine contraction. Some of the complications are like suture disruption, rupture of membranes, and choral amnionitis. These are the most common complications associated with cervical cerclage. And the removal time for the suture should be an appropriate time before labor, which is around 37 weeks. That's all for this video. Thank you.